Hello, and welcome to Worship with First United Church of Oak Park. First United is an open and affirming, more light congregation, meaning whoever you are, whoever you love, whatever your gender, we welcome and affirm you as a beloved child of God. And whether you are a visitor or a member, we hope that you will find meaning in our time together today. Whenever you are watching this, we are so glad that you have joined us for this worship experience, especially since it is that special service where we bless the animals in our lives. But if you are watching this on Sunday morning, we encourage you to make use of the live chat feature. Let us know you are here, share any prayers that are on your heart or mind, and use that space to connect with and, pro and provide care for one another. Know that you can also send your prayer requests to us at prayers at firstunitedoakpark.com at any time. I invite you to take a deep breath, find your grounding here and now in this space. Feel the spirit gathering and holding us together. This week, even more than most, this week I need to know that I have the peace of Christ to draw upon in a world where violence seems rampant and where love of the power of guns seems to outweigh love of God and love of neighbor. In the world that we have seen unfold this week, I need to know that I can draw upon the peace of Christ. So I am so grateful that we can, during worship, we can share the peace of Christ with one another. The way that we will share the peace of Christ in this digital time is that we are inviting you to take a moment and send a text message to someone or to take a moment and write a Facebook post on their wall, to write a letter and jot it down and send it in the mail later today to do something, to reach out with an expression of God's own peace, your love for another person who is a part of this household of faith. Take that time and do that in the next two minutes, reaching out and sharing Christ's peace. Kindred, may the peace of Christ be with you. Right. 
Hi friends. Have you ever wondered how everything got its name? Like, why do we call a book a book? Or a pillow a pillow? Our scripture today is the story of how all the animals got their names. And it was the first human, Adam, who named them. It says, God brought every animal of the field and every bird of the air to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called every living creature, that was its name. Can you imagine trying to come up with so many words or names for things? I wonder if you have ever named something. Like maybe a pet? Did you get to pick their name? How did you decide? Every word or name has an origin, essentially a story about it. The study of these stories of words is called etymology. And each word, each name has a meaning. I have two cats. And when we were thinking of what their names would be, we wanted them to be something meaningful to us. Their names are Castiel and Crowley. I was hoping to get them here so that you could see them, but they are feeling a little camera shy. But the literal meanings of their names are not why we chose them. Castiel literally means, my shield is God. And here she is. Yeah, she doesn't want to say. <laughs> Crowley literally means, descendant of the hardy warrior. But we didn't choose these names for what they actually mean. We chose them because they are the names of two characters on our favorite TV show. Others might find these names to be strange or silly, but they are meaningful to us. Names are important and full of meaning. They have their own stories. But when we choose them, when we give someone or something a name, it is a huge part of their origin, of their story. God had Adam name the animals and asked him to care for them. We too are entrusted with the care of God's creation, with the care of animals. It is a big responsibility. And if you have a pet, you know it is a big responsibility. Caring for a pet means feeding them, making sure they have water, maybe grooming them or walking them, or cleaning out litter boxes, taking them to the vet, cleaning out their tank or their cage, or just spending quality time with them and giving them your love. But caring for other living creatures can add meaning and purpose to our lives, as well as bring us great joy. And that is something to be very thankful for. 
last week on Facebook, we were sharing with you some pictures of our home offices. So I thought today, rather than my garden, I would share with you from my home office. So would you join me in a time of prayer? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Where do human beings come from? Where do all the animals come from? Why is the world so full of life everywhere, all around? Well, that is the story of creation. And in the Christian faith, it is not one story, but really two stories. And although it is a bit vexsome to modern sensibilities that these stories do not match up and are not the same, in the sensibility of the ancient world, you would never settle for just one story when two stories are twice as good. The first story of creation is cosmic and grand with God, something like a monarch pronouncing from just beyond view. God speaks and the animals and the human beings all in their variety jump to coming into being and falling into line in perfect order everything in its place and God declaring, it is good, it is good indeed, it is very good. The second creation story, by contrast, it is earthy and human shaped, far from an invisible monarch just out of view. God is seen planting gardens and taking walks in the evening breeze and forming creatures by hand from the dirt, like a potter at a pottery wheel before breathing into their nostrils to bring them life. Genesis 2, the second creation story, reveals a, a dirt under the fingernails kind of God with life beginning in a garden called Eden. But before long, the passage takes a, a strange turn. God says of the human being, the first of all the animals to be created, the human being all by itself, God says, it is not good for the human being to be alone. Our ears should perk up. It is not good for the human being to be alone. God created all of this. How is it that something is not good? Has God made a mistake? Our ears should perk up because God sure seems to act like it was a mistake because straight away, God sets out trying to fix it. The artisan God, the potter at the wheel God, God starts creating all of the animals of the world, forming them for the human being, for company, for companionship. And every time that God finished an animal, it was placed before the human being who gave it its name. A name, it is a powerful and intimate thing to give a name. A name binds and connects. A name means that the one who is named is worthy of being called out to. What we name is what we love. God forms all the animals of the earth and the human being names them. Rhinoceros and otter. Zebra and Komodo dragon, antelope and gazelle and Thompson's gazelle, snake and robin and wolf and bear and goat and badger and turtle and pig, desert cat and lynx and every animal and bird of the earth. They were all given a name, each declared worthy of naming. Yet there was still something missing. And so God split the human being in two and the drama of humankind began. But before hurrying on to that, let us remark for a moment that companionship between animals and the human being, that was God's plan A. That was plan A for companionship. God thought that it was pretty likely that the human being would find companionship. God was sure enough 
that this plan would work, that before rounding out the animal companion plan, God had managed to fill the world with all manner of different sorts of animals. Why settle for just one creation story when two is twice as good? There's so much light and truth in this second creation story, this beautiful tale of the lone human being naming the animals. First, we see a deep and hard truth that it is not good to be alone. This is from God's own mouth. In a creation that was good and very good, the very first thing that was not good was that the human being would be utterly alone. Even God has said that it is not good for a human being to be alone. To be utterly alone is terrible. It breeds despair, it sends the mind down dangerous paths that curl off and away and do not return back toward paths of life. Human beings cannot stand to be alone indefinitely. That is the first truth we see. Second, animals can be a wonderful companion to human beings. This was God's plan A, after all. The cats and dogs and birds and turtles and rats and chinchillas that live in our homes, that brighten our days, they are a testament to the truth that we see here in Genesis, that God was onto something with this companionship between human and animal business. That is the second truth that we see, that animals are good companions for human beings. And the third truth. Third, it is such a joy to give animals their names, to name our pets. This is deep, deep stuff. We want to do this. We want to name our animals. It is an intimate, powerful thing to give a name. A name binds and connects. A name means that the one that is being named is worth being called out to, worthy of being known. What we name is what we love. That is the third truth. It is a joy to name our animals. The story of creation from the book of Genesis, the two stories, they are full of light and truth. What a treasure. It gives to us all the credence we need for our tradition of the blessing of the animals. Now, if you are planning to participate in the blessing of the animals, this is a good time to, to gently, gently grab your beloved animals or pull out a picture of an animal of blessed memory. This is a good time to do that, to, to gather what you need for this blessing. Now, I think of the animals that have blessed my family, my life. I think of them and immediately bounding into my memory comes Joshua the dog the size of a small pony, but forever a puppy in his mind. Then Grundoon, the calico, who loved only one person in all the world, and that was not me. And her kitten, Doris, who loved all people equally, because I'm not sure she could tell us apart. I think of Tata, the purebred Siamese, who somehow wound up a stray in New Mexico. Her kitten, Dodge, who loved no food better than shoelaces. I think of Ralph, the basset hound, whose nose could see an invisible world, Truffle the cat, prone to sneezing with the sweetest disposition and the most alarming meow. I remember them all and bless them and their memory, for they are a blessing from God. Have you gotten your animals? Have you got your photos? We will first begin by blessing our living animals. If you would please join in this blessing, the words will be at the bottom of your screen. I promise to love you. I promise to care for you. I promise to pet you. I promise to walk you. I promise to feed you, but not as much as you would like me to. I promise that if it is within my power, you will never get fleas or worms. I promise to keep you safe. And if in the end your death comes before mine, I promise to ease your passage home to God 
in every way I can. And to you who are remembering beloved animals who have died, would you join me in these promises? I promise to remember you. I promise to think fondly of the best times with you. I promise not to dwell on memories of broken vases or linger too much on memories of the end. I promise to be grateful for you. You are worthy of it, worthy of your name. You were formed by God's own hand. I promise all these things in the name of the creator who formed us by hand, and in the name of Jesus, our great high shepherd, and in the name of the spirit who broods over us like a hen over her chicks. To all of our animals, living and those who live only in our memories, for all of them, thanks be to God. We give them our blessing, returning blessing for blessing. Amen.
Today we are collecting our fourth Sunday offering for Housing Forward. The needs of those experiencing homelessness have changed so much due to the pandemic. And we have an opportunity today to help through the Hotel to Home initiative of Housing Forward. In a moment, we will see a video about that project. You can give to the initiative by selecting Fourth Sunday Offering from the drop-down menu when you give on our website, or by including Fourth Sunday Offering in your text to give. You can also give to the church's general fund today to support all of our ministries. The instructions for giving will be on your screen right after this short video sharing what the Hotel to Home initiative is doing for our neighbors. May God bless our gifts. Lofty 
mountain grandeur and hear the road and feel the gentle breeze then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou Will you pray with me? Oh God, for creatures that wag and chirp and swim and croak and purr, we give you thanks. You have made us a precious part of your creation, stewards of your creation, and partners with all of your creation. May we take our responsibilities seriously and express our gratitude joyfully. We give thanks for the many companion animals blessed in this service and for the love and comfort they bring to so many hearts. We thank you for the ways they are present with us in all of our joys and concerns without judgment. May they be our example as we share our joys and concerns with you and with each other now. God, we trust that you have heard our prayers and that you are at work among us. We are your people striving to do the work of love in this world with Jesus as our example in all that we do and in all that we say. And with Jesus as our example in the way that we pray, especially when we model our prayers after him saying our creator, our mother, and our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
I have some announcements to share with our community so that you can know what is happening in the life of our church. Prayer Shawl Ministry will continue to meet, but we will change our schedule a little bit for the program year. We will meet on the second and fourth Mondays of the month at 10 a.m. Therefore, the first prayer shawl meeting of the program year will be on Monday, September 14th. Knitters and crocheters of all ability levels are invited to join us for this time of fellowship, self-care, and do something that allows us to provide care for our community. We will continue to use the same Zoom link that we have, and that can be found on our website. Our hymn sings with our music director, Bill Chin, will continue on Mondays at 12.30 p.m. Next Sunday, September 6th, is a Communion Sunday. So have your Communion elements ready for worship next Sunday. You can bake a fresh baked loaf of homemade bread. You can get some crackers or tortilla. You can use grape juice, wine, milk, whatever you have will do. The program year is fast approaching and our socially distanced virtual gathering day is Sunday, September 13th. That morning, there will be an orientation for our quest confirmation class. Our youth groups, Fuji and Fush will meet again in the evening and worship will be at 11 a.m. There will be additional opportunities to engage as a community prior to and following worship that Sunday. So please keep an eye on your email to learn more about what will be happening that day to celebrate this new program year. Now, please join your voices with all those gathered near and far as we sing together our closing hymn. in the choir, some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire, and some just clap their hands, or pause, or anything they got now. Listen to the top where the little bird sings on the melodies, with the high notes ring, now most of everything, the neighbors be so breeze. Dogs and the cats, they take up the middle Where the honeybee hums and the cricket fiddles The donkey brays and the pony neighs And the old coyote howls Listen to the bass, it's the one on the bottom Where the bullfrog croaks and the hippopotamus Moans and groans with a big to-do And the old cow just goes Brrrr. All God's critters got a place in the choir Some sing low some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire, and some just clap their hands or pause for anything they got now. Friends, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all persons. Care for all animals, all creation. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit that unites us across time and space. And may the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.